In the last video, I showed you how to export a survey from JISC and how to get it into an SPSS readable .sav format. And if you remember, this was our survey. It was a very simple uh, test survey with a few questions. Uh, one of these grid and a semantic rating questions, and then a set of Likert scales and two demographics, gender and program of study. The next step to proceed with analyzing your data is to open the file in SPSS. For students watching this from Maynooth University, you'll need to open SPSS through Apps Anywhere. Um, unfortunately, if you're working with other programs like Stata um, or like R, you are better off first exporting the data out of JISC into um, a .xls format or a .csv format, so just into, into a spreadsheet and then reading that into R. Um, the newest version of, S of um, Stata at the moment does have a custom custom module command for reading uh, state of files at the moment. It's um, it's a little bit convoluted, but it is possible. So I'm going to show you the method for dealing with this file through just SPSS. So for students watching this within Maynooth University, you have access, remote access to SPSS through Apps Anywhere. I'm not going to talk through how to open SPSS and Apps Anywhere, but there's links in the description for how to access it through the Maynooth University website. And there's also a link to the Maynooth IT department's instructions for using uh, apps anywhere at home. So when you do finally launch SPSS, you'll be brought to a, a page that looks like this. And this is the basic viewer in SPSS that allows you to switch between two screens. We've got data view and we've got variable view. So by default, there will be nothing within this. Uh, if you've selected, if you've started SPSS and you've selected open new data, then you will be left with a screen that looks like this. So what I'm going to do is go to file, open, Data. And from there, you need to navigate using the folder navigation system to where you've saved your data set. You can use the pull down menus. Uh, you can add a folder in here. Sorry, um, you can use the navigator here to go back one, or you can use the pull down menu here to browse and scroll through your folders and directories manually. Uh, this is the file I'm going to use, which is just the original uh, raw file as it was exported from JISC. And it'll, it'll um, by default be given a name that looks something like this. It'll be date stamped. It'll have the title of the survey that you gave it. And I should finish with the extension .sav. That means that this file is SPSS readable. When I click on that, it might take a minute or two to work, especially if you're working remotely. If your machine's a little bit slow, just give it a little bit of time to work. So from here, you will be able to see um, a number of things. In this view, variable view, this is where you can preview the contents of your data uh, in terms of the variables. So this is where we set up our variables. We set the different value labels associated with each of the different values of each question. I'll explain that in a moment. We can give our variables a, a longer form label if we want to give it something more descriptive. And on the leftmost column under name, you should see the names that you gave your um, that you gave your questions uh, as they were assigned originally in, uh, in JISC. So what you'll notice is that these labels here correspond to the sections uh, and the subsections as you initially set them up. So if I go back to my survey, you'll see here that these questions with the label witchcraft, ghosts, extraterrestrial life, precognition, and God have got the, the title or the name question one underscore one, Q1 underscore two, three, four, and five. And that corresponds to the setup that I have here where I have got question one and then sub, sub question one, two, three, four, and five. You'll notice also that the labels that have been generated through the export process are um, the same as the question. So whatever the question text is here in the Likert scales, you'll see that it's also been given here in the label. And in practice, we can go in here and we can edit these as we want. We can give it a longer form description if we want. We could call it belief in witchcraft, belief in ghosts. For your own server, you're going to have something else. The most important part is this one over here, which is values. So um, as you know, part of the process of coding data um, is that uh, it doesn't read in answers in the form of letters, it needs to deal with them in the form of numbers. So when we have a response option in our questionnaire, that's something like this one. Let's take this question here, in what discipline is your degree program? And in the original survey, we gave the respondents four options. They could take arts, humanities, social science, science or law. What SPSS is going to do is it's going to assign a numeric value to each of those categories. One for arts and humanities, two for social science, three for science, and four for law. And if you want to get into that little sub menu there, you'll see whenever I click into the white space here, these three dots appear on the side. And when I click on those three dots, it expands 
this value labels window and I can go in here and preview what the value labels are. It's like this question here, uh, the rating questions uh, about tattooing. We have uh, a set of value labels that are one equals SD, two equals D. What does that mean? This corresponds to the values that we set up in the questionnaire here. So strongly disagree, disagree, neither agree, and then strongly agree. So essentially what we've got is a file that mimics what we had here in the original questionnaire with some names, some labels, and some values. You also notice there's a tab down here where I can switch between, by default I'm in variable view, but I can also switch to data view. Um, it's not likely you'll need to engage with this too much in your analysis, especially if you're, um, especially if you've done most of the setup work uh, in, in GIST because all of your data entry has been handled by the computer or by the program, sorry. But on data view, you can see here, we can preview the raw data file. And here we've got our question headers, the column headings up here correspond to the variable names here. So question one, one, question one, two, question one, one, question one, two. Each of these rows then is a case. So this represents the complete answer set of one respondent. So the first respondent answered two to this question, three to this question, four to this question. And you know, if, if we want to know what two, three, and four mean, we need to switch back into variable view and see that in this case, one is um, its belief level. So between zero and 10, they can rank do not believe at all or believe completely. Now, one of the most important steps, or um, I suppose things that uh, that just doesn't do for you um, in the export process is it doesn't properly set up the level of measurement. This is really important because if you want to get to generating graphs or doing any more kind of complex analysis, you need to set up the level of measurement appropriately. What does level of measurement mean? You should have covered this in your undergraduate methods class and all of you will have done this. So it's worth revising this in your uh, second year methods books if you're not sure, but there's plenty of resources out there online as well that explain level of measurement. SPSS recognizes three levels of measurement. It recognizes the scale, the ordinal, and the nominal. And this is to do with the degree of numeric precision in, um, in the variable that you're measuring. So nominal variables are things that vary in kind rather than quantity. Nominal variables here that we have are gender, and program of study. You can see here that really the assignment of the values here, one, two, three, and four is quite arbitrary. It doesn't matter in what rank order they are. The numbers don't imply any kind of hierarchy or level. Whereas in this one, the respondent is being asked to rate their agreement, their attitude. In this case, the level does matter. There's a clear difference between someone who says strongly agree and someone who says, sorry, strongly disagree and someone who says strongly agree. We can separate two respondents answers on this question in terms of their level of agreement. So what we need to do is we need to tell SPSS what type of question it is that we're dealing with. In this case, for Arts and Humanities program of study, we're dealing with a nominal variable. And the same with our gender question. In the gender option, we've got three options, male, female, other. We set this to nominal. Now, strictly speaking, and there's um, a lot of debate on this and there's a lot of comment on this. Of course, you open up any methods textbook or data analysis textbook, they'll talk about this as well. How do we decide what to set these ones to? Do we set them to uh, ordinal, which represents a rank order question, or do we set them to scale? Questions like this one here, especially where we've got kind of these polar opposites with a wide range of response categories um, and that neutral midpoint here represented by, by number five, we tend to set these ones as scale. Um, there's several reasons for that. I'm not going to go into it in this video because I just want to talk about the technical the technical aspects of it. But I do encourage you to read up on it if you are unsure about it. So we're going to set our attitudinal ones and our Likert measures to the scale level. And once we've done that, we make sure that every one of your questions has been given an appropriate level of measurement. And then you'll see that reflected here and that the little symbol here has changed. There's a different symbol for each of the levels of measurement. The ruler indicates a scale one. And these three separate uh, colored circles indicate a nominal variable. So in this case, these are my levels of measurement now set up. And now we're ready to proceed with the data analysis.